This is Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, where today two postseason hopefuls, the San Francisco 49ers and the Cincinnati Bengals, look to solidify their playoff chances. In the AFC, the Bengals at 7-5, and five, holding down the sixth seed. In the NFC, the 49ers at 6-6. Six and six. They have the seventh and final seed as we go deep into week 14 of this NFL season. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cincinnati. Greg Gumbel along with Adam Archuleta. A.J. Ross will be on the sidelines with us as always. Arch, Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow has been pretty good in this, his sophomore <laughs> season, and he will have to be at least that down the stretch. Well, pretty good. This is one heck of a passing game. And, Greg, Joe Burrow has shown that he could put up big numbers on any given week, but by far the number one storyline in this game is going to be the right pinky. He dislocated it last week in the first series of the game. He still threw the ball 40 times for 300 yards. He did have two interceptions. Now, he seemed to get through practice just fine this week, but there is, without a doubt, all eyes are going to be on the right hand of Joe Burrow in this game. Now, the 49ers are led by quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. They say he's played well for the most part this season. Well, he's been solid, especially since the midpoint of the season. And because of a strong running game, Greg, he hasn't had to do too much. But today, in this game with injuries and no Elijah Mitchell, he's going to have to carry the load in the passing game. The good news, he gets Debo Samuel back. The one of the top playmakers in the game. And George Kittle was simply a monster last week. 181 yards. He looked healthy. He looked like he was having fun. And he's ready to have a big December. When has George Kittle looked like he isn't having fun? He's <laughs> Good amazing. Point. Good point. Cincinnati has won the toss. And they defer, which means they will kick to the visiting 49ers. Number 23, deep. For San Francisco. It is an upbeat crowd here in the jungle. Well, it's something that Bengal fans aren't really used to this time of year. Meaningful games in December with a really good chance to get to the playoffs. Michael Hasty will let this one fly over his head and through the end zone for the touchback. And we check in for the first time today with A.J. Ross. A.J. Greg, when I spoke with Joe Burrow ahead of this game, he told me whenever you injure anything on your throwing hand, it's going to affect you. He said it's just a matter of figuring out how to still do your job at a high level. During pregame warm-ups, he had a glove on briefly, but he took it off. He also got some good reps in with his wideouts, throwing the ball deep and getting some good spin on it. And speaking of reps, running back Joe Mixon didn't get many of those. He did not practice this week with a head cold. We'll see how he bounces back today. AJ, thank you. On first down, Jeff Wilson in the backfield. He takes the pitch. Nowhere to go. San Francisco quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo, his eighth year out of Eastern Illinois, 15 TD passes, eight interceptions. He has also run for three touchdowns. Well, as I mentioned earlier, he has been solid this year. He had 299 yards last week, two touchdowns, but he did have two interceptions as well. We mentioned injuries in the backfield. Probably going to have to make a few more plays today in the passing game and attack that Cincinnati secondary. The give coming in this direction is Debo Samuel. And Debo Samuel get used to watching him run the football because he figures to do that. Well, Joe Bocci good. making the tackle. Sorry, Arch. Yeah, well, hey, look, it's good news to have Samuel back, and he has shown just how dangerous, Greg, and how versatile he has been. The yards after the catch, all the great things that he does with the ball in his hands. He's made a big impact in this offense in the last two weeks as a running back. And Kyle Shanahan said that if he wasn't confident that he wasn't ready to play, he wouldn't put him out there because he's that important and they need him down the stretch. Here's a third and 11 for Garoppolo and the 49ers. Under pressure and going down inside the 15-yard line. Trey Hendrickson. Coming into this game with 11 and a half sacks on the season now has 12 and a half. 
a beautifully drawn up game inside. They're going to push it up in here and then watch Hendrickson. Look at how tight he wraps it. He's lined up against Trent Williams and they take advantage. They're not going to beat Williams to the outside. A very well done game up front to get the Bengals off the field. Here is Phillips. He's on 44. Running room up the sideline. And it's going to be marked out of bounds just inside the San Francisco 45 yard line. So Cincinnati on offense, Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow. He's thrown 23 TD passes. He's run for two more, but his 14 interceptions are the most in the NFL this season. And some of those interceptions, they're not all his fault. Certainly, there's been some times where he's tried to force the ball in the red area, but his receivers also have to do a better job. A lot of tips and deflections that have ended up in interceptions, but they know that they cannot turn the ball over as they get into crunch time here in this part of the season. Joe Mixon tripped up just as he got the ball. It's on the ground and covered by the Bengals. A couple of key members of the offensive line were questionable but are in there today. Center Trey Hopkins and right tackle Riley Reef and Arch running back Joe Mixon. We just saw him. He is on a roll. Uh, he is. And look, this is a throw first offense. It centers around Burrow in the passing game. But I think you can't deny the fact that after the bye week, they really came out strong and ran the ball extremely well. They really couldn't get their run game going, but that is an important part of this offense. No square, no Loss of two on the first play at second and 12. Burrow, quick pass. In and out of the hands of C.J. Uzama, the tight end. The 49ers 4-3 defense, number 97, Nick Bosa, creates havoc. 12 games, 12 quarterback sacks. The linebackers, Dre Greenlaw isn't there. He has a groin injury. They are thin arch in the secondary. Yeah, this could be the weak spot. It's going to be really interesting to see how they hold up against this passing game. The Bengals are so good on the outside, and you know they already were down. Jason Verrett, he gets hurt in Week One. Emmanuel Mosley, their best cover guy, he's not playing today. So the rookie Ambry Thomas is going to get a chance to prove that he can play here in the NFL. On third and twelve, Burrow throwing and it is incomplete. Pass intended for Jamar Chase. Yeah, it looked like it was right there. I know that Al Shair, he was underneath in that window, but that was an opportunity right there that Jamar Chase really could have had. And you look at really the second half of his season, his numbers, a, a big reason why his numbers are down are because the drops have started to creep back into his game. That's the 10th of the season that he has dropped. That ties him for the most in the NFL. This will bounce into the end zone for the touchback. And the ball will come out to the 20-yard line, 11.54 to play in a scoreless first quarter in Cincinnati. Welcome back, everyone. Right off the bat, we want to say hello and send our best wishes out to Howard Katz, our friend, the Senior Vice President of Broadcasting and Media Operations for the NFL. He's recovering from surgery, and all of us, our crew here in Cincinnati, wish Howard the very best. From the 20-yard line. A double by seven. Jeff Wilson in the backfield alongside Garoppolo, who will throw this side of the field. That is complete and out of bounds to just about the 25 is Brandon Ayuk. For the Niners, a healthy offensive line. Trent Williams, solid veteran at left tackle. Alex Mack, just as solid a veteran at the center position. And we've talked about Debo Samuel and George Kittle, what outstanding players they are, but that running game is going to be a big question mark today. Yeah, and it seems as per usual with Kyle Shanahan's football team running back once again, just devastated by injury. No Elijah Mitchell, who has been so good, so Jeff Wilson Jr. gets a chance. Garoppolo throws on the run, hits his man, and that is George Kittle. And Kittle is out of bounds. It's enough for a first down. The Bengal defense arch has a front line that will just wear you out. Well, two things that we really haven't said a lot about this Bengal defense is the front four in the last two years, but 
Because of guys like this, Trey Hendrickson playing so well, you see he already had a sack in the first series of the game. They have been able to get after the passer and also so good at stopping the run. They've had a huge turnaround this year. On first down, pass to the outside. This is a And he'll be brought to a halt. Loose ball inside the 30-yard line, and the whistle has him down before the ball comes out. So forward progress will yeah. be just across the 35. And it's just, just a matter of timing because I think it was a good call to, to call forward progress. You're going to see, I think that's Joe Bocci. Watch, he gets the right arm in there. You see Von Bell trying to get in there, and then he just rips it out, but because of the whistle. Yeah. Just a matter of milliseconds. On second and six, Wilson to the near side. Very hard as he crossed the 35-yard line. That hit made by Jermaine Pratt. Well, Greg, to me, the, the, the position group to watch here for Cincinnati is going to be the linebackers who are really hurting. Logan Wilson, really, who was their leader and does such a good job in the run game and the passing game. They're going to miss him today, but Jermaine Pratt is coming off probably one of the best games of his career last year in the middle. That was an excellent play here to force a big third and five. Bravo, bravo. Use check. In the backfield, picking up blitzers. The throw to the far side, it is incomplete. Intended for Ayuk and Awuzie, helping to break it up. A really a nice job by Awuzie, and there was a question mark on whether or not he was going to be able to play this week, but just blankets Ayuk to the sideline. And that's really something you don't see a lot of from this offense. Most of Garoppolo, his best work is in the middle of the field. A rare route to the sideline, but played perfectly by Ouzier. Darius Phillips dives for the ball. The ball is loose inside the 25-yard line, and it's going to go the other way. There are Bengals saying, we got it. But there are a few striped shirts that says it belongs to the 49ers. Let's see what the end result is. You know, it looked like live that San Francisco was able to get on that football. The discussion continues midfield. The ruling on the field is the ball was touched by the receivers, recovered by the kicking team, first down. River Craig Craft, third year man out of Washington State, is the man who recovered. Meanwhile, we have an injury on the field. We'll check that when we come back after this. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by LL Bean. Shop LLBean.com today and be an outsider. Farmers Insurance. Get a quote at farmers.com. And by. Direct TV stream. Get your TV together. It was Darius Phillips who attempted to catch that punt, lost it, and was at the bottom of the pile who was injured. He has gone off to the locker room. Meanwhile, from the 23 yard line, the 49ers. The pitch now for Debo Samuel. And Samuel inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. Let's go back to that punt that Darius Phillips could not hold on to. Well, it doesn't appear that there's any wind really in the stadium. And so this is just a matter of Darius Phillips. He just misjudges the ball. You know, one of the, the number one things you want to do as a punt returner is make sure that your feet are directly underneath you. You can see he misjudged it. He had to lunge for it. And that's a big play for a, a special teams unit for the 49ers that has really struggled in the last two games. Garoppolo throw. Kill is hit right about at the line of scrimmage without any without any gain whatsoever. Jesse Bates with the hit down to AJ. We'll keep AJ on hold and we'll check it to JB and coach in New York. Coach, the Buccaneers are more than Tom Brady. Yeah, Leonard Fournette's gonna take this in, go 47 yards, give Tampa Bay a 7-0 lead. Remember Monday night, 
Damian Harris. Damian Harris had a big run from New England from 64 yards out. Right now, Tampa Bay 7, Buffalo nothing. All right, hey, Greg, AJ, hey, whenever you're ready. Back to Greg Dumbly. JB, thank you very much. You too, coach. Third and four. Garoppolo standing in. Now throws over the middle and inside the 10 yard line. The catch is made by Jamichael Hasty, but there's a penalty marker down. Holding offense, number 71. It's a 10 yard penalty replay. Third down. That's the left tackle, Trent Williams. That pass, a pretty good example of what Jimmy Garoppolo does a bunch of the time. Yeah, but this is one of the rare ones. Trent Williams right here, number 71. One of the rare mistakes that he has made. You see both of his hands on the outside of the shoulder pads of Hendrickson. And it doesn't get much better than Trent Williams on the outside. That's going to be a fun matchup to watch. Look at that pancake block. But Hendrickson against Trent Williams, two players playing at a high level this season. The 49ers committed 10 penalties against Seattle last week. That pass is complete. And inside the 20, close to the 15, is Jawan Jennings. And that'll be about two yards short of a first down. Boy, and that's... Really nice effort by Jennings to, I mean, it was close. Oh, that oh, ball boy, came out. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What a chop. And bounced right back to him. Yeah, Von Bell. Just an excellent job of, of trying to chop that ball out. And 49ers very fortunate to get that one back. Robbie Gold from 33 yards out. And that's right down the middle. 6.37 to play in the first quarter. 49ers draw first blow. Back here live at Paul Brown Stadium where the Niners just scored three points off a special teams turnover. And speaking with Coach Kyle Shanahan earlier this week, he emphasized how much special teams had to play better, especially after the last time out with Seattle where they had the fake punt and a fumble that cost them big. He said, bottom line, they cannot make mistakes. So this turnover was clutch, guys. AJ, thank you, Adam. Stanley Morgan can't hold on to the football. Twists away from one tackler, but only makes it out to about the 14-yard line. Suddenly, special teams is a real adventure here today. <laughs> Especially, oh, for Cincinnati, that one, his feet were under him, and he just doesn't track the ball all the way in. Thank goodness for the Bengals for getting a pretty good bounce. Well, and going back, going back to what AJ said about about the 49ers on special team yeah. last week. They allowed a fake punt for a touchdown. They fumbled a kickoff return. They missed an extra point. First down now from their own 14-yard line. Over on the outside is Tyler Boyd. Boyd with a little running room. Looks to be about a yard or two short of a first down. Tart making the stop. A really good play on first down and you know as I look at San Francisco's run defense who has really played pretty well here in the last four or five games they're going to be tough to run up inside I think the combination of Eric Armstead and DJ Jones they do really good job out there and so really good idea to attack the edge of that defense and look for Joe Mixon to get the first down and he does New set of downs by Joe Mixon. Touchdown in nine consecutive games. 19 carries for 54 yards last week. And I think, you know, as I mentioned earlier, just how well they ran the football after their bye week. Two of their three 100 yard games where it really provided much needed balance to their passing game. Burrow with the completed pass to Drew Sample, the tight end. Nice ball handling in the backfield by Burrow before hitting his man on the run. So it's either one of these two players. Either it's Thomas. Somebody's responsible for the tight end. You see they have some sort of a communication right there. You see Thomas, his eyes are on the other tight end. And just that little tight end wing set causing confusion. Easy throw for Burrow as he gets outside the pocket. Five, four, five, four. 
the second first down of the game for the Bengals offense. On the ground, Mixon. And Aziz Al Shair with the stop. It'll be second down. I think especially in this game, just, just getting Mixon involved is going to be so important. I don't think you want to put, you know, Joe Burrow throwing the football, you know, 35 and 40 times in this game, especially against the defense that really harassed and got after Russell Wilson really well last week. And it just, he's so good after contact and such a vital part of this offense. They've got to be able to feed him and get him at least 20 touches in this game. Burrow to throw on second and seven. Pulls it down, now throws over the middle, and he's got his man. Inside the 40-yard line goes T. Higgins, his first reception of the day. 20 yards. Well, it doesn't get much better than T. Higgins in the last two games. He's just been a monster. And here's where I think he does his best work. You notice when, when teams play him off, is when he's able to find that room. I think it's best to play him aggressively in press coverage, even though he's a bigger target, and you know you're going to get a shot down the field, but he eats up off coverage. Quick pass to the outside to Tyler Boyd, and Boyd lost the ball. Well, I think that his knee was down before the ball came out. Let's... Right, the elbow's down, and... But the Bengals today just <laughs> has a really hard time keeping control of that football. The 49ers have been so good this year in forcing fumbles. Came into the this game uh, NFL high 18. So it's second and 10 when all is said and done. to Tyler Boyd and he is out of bounds at about the 28 yard line very close to first down yardage it is a first down Greg when you watch Joe Burrow in this offense it really hinges on the short passing game and but but here's where he's kind of different and this is where he's kind of different than Garoppolo both quarterbacks get the ball out of their hands extremely quickly the difference is when Burrow does decide to strike and go downfield, he has an excellent connection rate. On first down, the pitch from Mixon. Pass it back. And right at about the 25 yard line. Mixon in his fifth season out of Oklahoma. And when he is healthy, he is really, really tough. Well, he's proven even, you know, with all the issues in the past few seasons that the Bengals have had up front with the offensive line and different offensive line combinations, he has found a way to stay productive and one of the top backs in the NFL. Now on second and seven. On the fake, that pass is tipped as Burrow got rid of it. Charles O'Menohue. Got a hand on it, disrupted it, intended for Tyler Boyd, and it will be third down. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to do with, with quarterbacks. You know, when they want to run those bootlegs and they want to get outside the pocket, the, the quick pressure in his face to make them do something with the ball immediately. It, it's when you give the quarterback time when he gets outside the pocket where the receivers are able to uncover and make a play. Penalty marker thrown. It's going to be against the Bengals. False start. Offense. Number 85. It's a five-yard penalty. Still third down. T. Higgins, a little premature movement. T. Higgins, what game he had last week? Nine catches for 138 and a touchdown. Mm, and he had a, just a 29-yard beauty last week. Really where he excelled and, and really showed up was in the, the combat catches or the contested catches those one-on-one -on -one balls where he just used that huge six-foot-four frame that he has and 
he was able to come down with three of those against the Chargers. You saw that note about the false start penalties. Only 50 penalties coming into this game, fewest in the league for the Bengals. This one over the middle, and that is complete to the 20 yard line goes Samaj Pirine. That'll be about two yards short of a first down. Let's see what Zach Taylor has in yeah, mind. It here. looks like that uh, he's going to send, uh, keep the offense on the field. You know, he's had a pretty good history of being aggressive on fourth down. And I think when you have a quarterback that is able to, to understand what a defense is doing and get yourself in the right play and make the right reads, and you have three pretty good pass catchers, it gives you a lot of confidence to go for it on fourth down. get a timeout called first charge timeout by the Bengals Cincinnati this is a 30 second timeout so does Zach change it up now well it looks like he had second thoughts about the uh, the, the play that was called you know, Burrow went under center probably didn't like the defensive configuration I, I would have thought that maybe in you know when you look at this fourth in a long one is really what it is that he's going to end up sending the kicking unit back on the field and second thoughts a little cold feet would rather go for the three points I have cold feet <laughs> Evan McPherson comes on for the field goal that will be from 37 yards out Good enough to put three on the board for the Cincinnati Bengals. 31 seconds to play in the first half. It's a 3-3 game. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Experian, where you take control of your credit. And by Papa John's. Order the new triple bacon pizza from Papa John's. Ah, uh, yesterday, children and adults enjoyed the festivities at the 32nd Annual Mount Adams Rain Dog Parade. Prizes awarded for the best holiday-themed costumes. The pups. Jermichael Hasty at his own goal line. And we'll now run this one out of the end zone. Consider the league's most prestigious honor. The Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award recognizes NFL players who have exhibited excellence on the field and whose passion to impact lives extends beyond the game. This year's nominee for the 49ers, Eric Armstead. And for the Bengals, it's Sam Hubbard. The NFL Man of the Year will be announced Super Bowl week at NFL Honors Thursday, February the 10th. To learn about all of this year's nominees, visit NFL.com slash Man of the Year. Sam Hubbard on the sideline. What an impact he has had on and off the field. Garoppolo on a quick slant. That is complete. Across the 40, out to the 45 goes Brandon Ayuk. Brought down by Jesse Bates, and the clock continues to move. 20 seconds to play here in the first half. Well, Kyle first Shan quarter, excuse me. Kyle Shanahan opting for a pass first offense, especially on first down in this game, and that was what you call threading the needle by Garoppolo to get that ball to Ayuk. No snap before the time expires here in the first quarter. A field goal apiece, 49ers and the Bengals tied at three. We're coming back to Cincinnati in just a moment. Welcome back to Cincinnati, everyone. First down for the 49ers at their own 46-yard line. Double reverse. Looking to throw is Ayuk, and now he's going to pull it down and run it up the sideline and out of bounds right around midfield. He took a look downfield. Here's a key. Really nice job by Von Bell in the middle of the field. He's not going to fall for it. He sees that it's coming. There's no offensive lineman down the field, and 
really well done by that secondary to play it honest and that's what you're looking for this when you're playing an offense like this that uses all the shifts and all the motions well, Kyle Shanahan does such a good job of playing with your eyes you have to be very disciplined and that was a good example of that running room up the middle Jeff Wilson and Wilson has a first down and running against this Bengal defense no easy thing well, you see the pre-snap motion on that play, and it just causes a little bit of indecision between the linemen and the linebackers. See the 49ers do it more than anybody, and they're just so good at it. Their level of execution and their timing, it really puts your defense, especially your linebackers, in a bind because right before the snap, your gaps change when they bring the motion across the formation, and that's where they get a lot of their big plays. From the Cincinnati 41, Wilson. And Wilson finds room right up the middle. Inside the 30 to the 29 yard line, that's another win. And I'll say it again it's not an easy thing to run against this Cincinnati defense. Well, Tom Compton, watch number 66. He's the one that really gets the key block. And that's on B.J. Bell inside. They got a really nice double team on D.J. Reader, who has been a rock inside, but that was really made by that backside. And you got two positive plays in a row after going to a pass-first offense in the first quarter. This is Debo Samuel. And brought to a halt at about the 27-yard line, D.J. Reader. The first one to hit him. Well, Greg, we you know talked about the improvement from the Cincinnati defense, how they're fourth against the run here, and, and one of the big reasons why is you know DJ Reader has just started to blossom and turn into an impact player. You know, playing the good as the run as good as anybody in the National Football League inside, and it was really a, a good job by that San Francisco offensive line. It's not very often they're able to move number 98 off the line of scrimmage. <laughs> On second and eight, around the right side, inside the 20, down the sideline, to the end zone for the touchdown goes Debo Samuel. <laughs> 27 yards. Well, once again, first the first thing you're going to see, as you know, watch Kittle gets one of the blocks, and then one more time, watch Compton. <laughs> He's going to get all the way around the corner and lead this thing to the outside. Look at Compton get on that horse and get up and seal the cornerback to the outside. Eli Apple, just an outstanding play. And Debo Samuel, that's all he needs to get in the end zone. Robbie Gold's kick is good. Six play, 75 yards. Debo Samuel with the rushing touchdown. And the 49ers reclaim the lead. It's 10 3. That's what you call multi purpose, multi talented <laughs> Debo Samuel. Five receiving touchdowns, six on the ground, 1,242 total yards. Yes, sir. Darius Phillips. Short kick just inside the 10 yard line. 20, and Russell to the ground by several 49ers. Here's a good note for everyone to help people affected by the southern and midwest tornadoes. Text tornadoes to 90999 to give $10 to the American Red Cross Southern and Midwest Tornadoes Relief. So once again, the 49ers with the lead. Just under 12 minutes to play here in the first half. Fake to Nixon. Burrow over the middle, and he's got a wide open receiver to about the 43 yard line. Tyler Boyd with the catch. Well, Bengals have three really good receivers, and they all play pretty distinct roles. And, and 
you know, Tyler Boyd has been such a reliable, consistent slot receiver here for the Bengals in the last, you know, few years. But he really is the guy that they use to work on the linebackers in the underneath part of the field. And he has done it quite well this season. This is Mixon. Mixon not going very far. So watching Burrow throw that last pass, I have to ask, have you had a dislocated finger? I'm just curious as to how painful that is to Joe Burrow. Of course, he told us it's fine, it's good, and he really didn't want to talk about it. Well, yeah, I've had plenty of dislocated and broken fingers and, and broken hands and all that good stuff. Now, the good news is that I didn't have to throw a football, <laughs> which I don't even think I could throw a football very well or pass 10 yards with a healthy hand, but that last pass right there looked like there was plenty of zip on it. No problems with the pinky. He's going to throw another one here. Oh, he's going to tuck it and run. Diving forward to about the 48 yard line. So last week against the Chargers, the Bengals' first possession, Burrow strip sacked, hurt his finger while trying to recover the football. Yep. Pinky finger on his right hand, suffered a dislocated finger, but stayed in the game. We asked you, the first thing you asked him, are you going to wear a glove? Goes, nope. Third and four now. Burrow on the move and has to run out of bounds. So that'll bring the punting unit on. Well, you better account for this guy. Nick Bosa, number 97, who has been lining up a lot on the left side. Really, he can line up anywhere, but, you know, once again, you saw the Bengals earlier, they were able to execute the, pretty much the same game on the other side on Trent Williams, and that time, Adenogy, the right guard, doesn't see Bosa, and that forces Burrow to get outside the pocket. Brandon Ayuk stands inside his own 10. For this kick on the run. With the catch about the 17, he goes out of bounds. 9.28 to play in the first half. The difference is a touchdown, 49ers lead. This is the NFL on CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verbo. Together awaits. The new film Sing 2, only in theaters December 22nd. And by. Grey Goose Vodka, Vive Le Martini. Yeah, Visions of Super Bowl 16 at the Pontiac Silver Dome in Michigan. The first of two Super Bowl meetings between the 49ers and the Bengals. San Francisco won 26 21, the franchise's first Super Bowl title. Some guy named Joe Montana was the MVP. Line of scrimmage is the San Francisco 21 yard line. Let's start this one off with a play fake. Garoppolo throws, and that is complete. This is Kittle. And Kittle, whose specialty is yards after the catch, makes it up to about the 27 yard line. What's happening in the NFC playoff situation? San Francisco started the day as the number seven seed, but Washington, beaten by the Dallas Cowboys today, has replaced them at number seven in San Francisco at the moment is in the number six slot. And even though they, you know, they lost a big one, a game that they really feel they should have had last week against Seattle, you know, the math says they still have a really good shot at the playoffs, and that loss by Washington really helps. This one is Wilson, who gets out about the 28-yard line. You know, you could hear it in, in, in the Bengals when we talked to them, and you mentioned it at the very top of the broadcast, Arch. It's really nice to get to this time of the year and be playing meaningful games. Yeah, but look, you've showed that you've been able to play at a high level, and then you've also dropped some games where you really shouldn't have dropped. I think both of these two teams have really lacked consistency and you know, have lost some games that they shouldn't have lost. But now, right, is the time to really play your best football. No one's been good on third down so far today. Both teams 0 for 3. This one down the far sideline. It is George Kittle not able to come up with it. 
Well, I think Von Bell watched the right hand. I think he was able to hook. I think he was able to hook Kittle's left arm, and that's why Kittle had no choice but to try and bring it down with just one hand. See, that really a sneaky move, and that should have probably been called a pass interference, but it was so sneaky that nobody was able to see it, and Kittle has no choice but to try and bring the ball down with just one hand. Changes direction and across the 35 and brought down at about the 37 yard line. 7.48 to play in the first half. It's still a seven point lead for San Francisco. 7.48 to play here in the first half. Bengals only with a field goal to show. What are they missing today? Going to hand it off. This is Chase. Chase is dragged down. Well, he thinks he's still alive. Did he stay up? Fred Warner with the tackle. And they are going to mark him down. Yeah, I think. Yeah, at about the 42 yard line. I think, look, he stays right on top of Warner. And I don't think that there is any part of his shin or his knee that hit the ground. This is. Just outstanding balance. <laughs> and yeah, he stays up. That's incredible. That officially chases first touch of the day. So I'll repeat, what are they not doing that they should be doing or what they usually do? Well, here's what's going on. Look, in, in my opinion, when you go into a game, you, you got to try to attack where a defense is, is hurting and where they're a little bit weak. And to me, that's the outside. That's the quarterbacks for San Francisco. You've got two rookies out there that are basically rotating. And you really haven't attacked. You've only thrown two passes out wide. And I think the reason why they haven't been able to pick up many first downs, but I think you've got to attack outside the numbers. This is Mixon. Mixon with a couple. Let's go down to AJ. Well, Greg and Arch, you mentioned the young guys rotating in the Niners secondary. When speaking with Josh Norman, he said he's been trying to impart his wisdom to the younger guys. And, you know, they tell at times that they want to ask questions, but they're not necessarily speaking up. So he tries to explain things in a way different than the coaches and tries to encourage them to play relaxed and play free and play fast without making mistakes. Thanks, AJ. Josh Norman is the veteran out there in that crew in his 10th season out of Coastal Carolina. On second down, Burrow throwing. Intercepted. Penalty markers down. Jimmy Ward with the pick, and let's see what the call is. Illegal hands. Hands to the face. Defense number 20. It's a five yard penalty, an automatic first down. The rookie, Ambry Thomas, guilty of that flag, which nullifies the interception. A uh, huge, huge, huge mistake. And this really starts up front by Contavia Street. He gets the pressure up inside, and that's what forces Burrow. He can't step into it. It goes high onto Jamar Chase, and look, just a little bat to the face, and a critical, critical mistake. They really need and really want these two rookies, both Thomas and Lenore, to really step up and, and start to stake a claim at the quarterback spot. Keeps the Bengal offense on the field, and this is Mixon and Mixon. Dragged down. Time for another update. Let's get you back to New York City. Once again, JB and the coach. Brady gave Fournette a shot, then he went to a sure-handed receiver. Yeah, that being Mike Evans, there, Tom Brady's going to find him on a bullet in the back of the end zone from 13 yards out. Tampa Bay has taken the lead over Buffalo, 17-3. to We'll take it back to the sure-handed Greg Gumbel. I'm not very sure on that. You, you're pretty sure-handed. Yeah. Yes. What happened to Buffalo? Holy smokes. On second and eight. That pass. Short, but look at Uzama fighting for yardage. Enough for a first down at the 37-yard line. 
But really, for the first time, you're starting to see the Bengals get into a little bit of a rhythm. It all started by getting that first first down. And, you know, it's so difficult for an offense when you're going basically three plays and out, four plays and out. You can't pick up that first down. It really limits your playbook and how you can attack a defense. Burrow going to go for it all down the sideline. It is caught by Jamar Chase for the touchdown. In incredible. I mean, this. What a catch. And look, it looks like Chase is just jogging. He's not even running hard. And then just at the end, he puts Ambry Thomas to sleep. He accelerates. And then the end of this catch, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, it appears as if he controls the football as it hits the ground. Just gorgeous, Greg. Simply gorgeous throw and catch by Jamar Chase. And, and if it was up to me, well. Wow. <laughs> That's what they're waiting for out yeah. on the field for oh. confirmation. Uh, that view might be tough. The previous play is under review. Oh, you betcha. Yeah. It, it, you know what? On second thought, I. This one might have a chance of getting overturned. We'll take a break and come back and talk about it. Welcome back. That call has been overturned. We bring in Gene Steratore. Gene, what did you see? Great effort by Jamar Chase, but we can see that he has to survive the ground. He's going to the ground. The initial, some possession, but when that football hits the ground, you can see the ball move on its own. This is a great angle that we're seeing now where you will watch when the ball hits, it dislodges from his hands, and then he repossesses. Great call of incomplete by replay. Gene, thank you. This is Mixon. Mixon to the 30. And it'll be third down. Yeah, it looked like, you know, that original angle, it looked like, man, that was going to be a, a great catch, but that was really a nice shot. You saw it from the other angle where, as the ball as the ball is contacting the ground that left hand just kind of slips off and and you're going to see it right here this is the angle the hand slips off and that means no control and really a good call by Earl overturning that catch so third and three burrow throwing over the middle in the air grabbed by the bengals <laughs> jamar chase and that's a good catch and that'll be a first down Well, this should have been an interception. Al Shair, number 51, you know, he comes in. It looks like he's looking at Boyd, like he's trying to make the hit. If he's looking at the football, that's going to be an interception. And then because that ball gets tipped, Warner, he can't make a play on the football. And then there's just Jamar Chase running behind, able to get the lucky tip ball. Just incredible sequence. On first down. This is Mixon. And Mixon, maybe a half yard gain. Let's get to New York once again. James Brown, Coach Bill Cowher. Greg, an arm and accurate. Third and 11, Justin Herbert rolls right, throws this ball 65 yards in the air, a dime to Jalen Guyton, 59 yard touchdown, and the Chargers take a 24 7 lead over the New York Giants. Hey, Adam, thanks for saying that Greg is sure handed. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. I, I, look, I know I'm in good hands when I'm around Greg. Oh, second and nine. Burrow. And hit almost immediately after the catch is made is P. Ryan. Aziz Al Shair with the hit. And it'll be third down. Well, I tell you what, Al Shair has really, really played well this year. He came into this game second on the team, 86 tackles, had 16 tackles last week. And again, is all over the football field making plays. Two minute warning. Two minutes to play in the first half. 10 3, 49. Want more stats? Just ask Siri, who leads the league in passing touchdowns? 
Welcome back to Paul Brown Stadium. Two minutes to play here in the first half. 49ers by a touchdown. Bengals knocking on the door. Yeah, be alert. They're, they're looking like they're going to chip the edges. Look for games run inside. Burrow near side. Wide open is Piron. Piron to the 10. Inside the 10 to the 9. And that will be marked down at the 10, and that will be about a yard or so to go for a first down. Coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. JB and Phil and Nate and Boomer and the coach. NFL scores and highlights coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Fred Warner is down on the sideline, number 54. When play resumes, it'll be a fourth and about two. Warner came into this game, the 49ers leading tackler on defense. Yeah, missed last week with the hamstring, and this will be an interesting decision, I think, by, by Zach Taylor, what you do on fourth and two. You know, the analytics will tell you, Greg, that you go for this. Give me a coach's gut check versus analytics. I'll take the coach anytime. A minute 42 on the clock for the first half. 10-6 San Francisco. It's Jermichael Hasty in the end zone, ready for the kick from McPherson. Again, the Verizon halftime report upcoming. JB and Phil and Nate and Boomer and the coach with plenty of scores and highlights coming up on the Verizon halftime report. I can believe this is week 14 already, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it really is. It has gone by fast. And the extra game at the end of the season kind of threw me off because there's still, it seems like the season should end a little bit faster. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo gets a chance to run that two minute drill and let's see. What he can do with two timeouts and about a minute and 30 left. Garoppolo directing traffic and throws to the sideline, and that is complete to Brandon Ayuk. San Francisco has scored 50 points in the last two minutes of first halves in games this year. That is second best in the NFL. Yeah, that's pretty exceptional. And You know, here's the question, you know, they've got to be able to operate in just a pure drop back passing game. Garoppolo, where he functions best, is the play action. And at this point, in this drive, in this game, play action really isn't a part of the offense. So somebody outside of Debo Samuel is going to have to win on the outside for Garoppolo to get them the football. Quick pass. Ayuk out of bounds, and here's a flag flying in from the secondary. And Kyle Shanahan was helping point it out to the officials on the sideline. Is it a, a hold by uh, Jawan Jennings, I believe? Holding. Offense, number 15. It's a 10 yard penalty. Second down. It's exactly what it is and who it is. Right up here on a and you see Jennings you see that left arm you see it right on that back of that shoulder pad and that's pretty lot, easy call right there a lot happening in there no, there's a lot of action but now you're at the point at second 19 with a minute 22 left and what are you inside the 15 yard line if you're not careful, you might give Cincinnati another shot at this with pretty good field position or 
Yeah, you can't do anything silly with the football here and give it back to Cincinnati before halftime. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Garoppolo throws, and that is complete. And knocked out of bounds just as he crosses the 20 is hasty. Von Bell with a hit on the far side of the field. 116 on the clock. Yeah, and, and once again, look. Yeah, he goes out of bounds, and so you stop the clock with a minute and 16 seconds, and it's third and 15 right, right now. Cincinnati, you know, they don't have to use one of their timeouts. And so once again, really tough position to be in here on third and 15 because you've got to be fairly conservative. But now Cincinnati gets a chance probably before halftime to get a pretty good shot at field position. Just got the snap off in time. Garoppolo with time going deep down this side of the field. It is caught <laughs> inside the 30 yard line. They dropped it. Oh, no, he didn't. Unbelievable. Travis Benjamin. Oh, you had a had it right there. A chance at Gloria Wugier, oh. who was beat. He just hits it with perfect timing and just, I mean, that was right there. Just, you know, credit to Wujie. That's a tough play to bring in, you know, with, with his hand placement where it is on his chest. But, I mean, boy, they had it. You know, Cincinnati dodges a big bullet letting Benjamin get behind him. Meanwhile, we have an injured Bengal back at about the 15-yard line. We'll take a break. Defensive end Trey Hendrickson was the injured Bengal. They brought the cart out for him, but he climbed up off of the turf and was walking to the locker room. It's a good sign, and that would have really hurt. What an incredible season that he has had here with the Bengals. Fourth and 15. Here is Phillips. Fair catch call for him. He missed that one. On the turf, San Francisco has it. Trent Sherfield with the recovery. What is going on? <laughs> oh, man. Right now, Darius Phillips is, he's feeling it because that's the second time today. The first one, he didn't get his feet set. This time, he's in perfect shape. Still kind of misjudges it a little bit. Drifts back, but just can't track the ball in in the 49ers. Boy, you just thought that you gave Cincinnati a good chance before halftime to maybe get some points and and to get something going. But for the second time today, San Francisco with a big taking advantage of a big mishap on special teams. San Francisco has two timeouts remaining and 57 seconds on the clock. Garoppolo the throw over the middle complete inside the 30 is hasty. Clock continues to move 45 seconds. Well, now San Francisco has plenty of time here inside the 30 yard line. And, you know, this is a, a place where if they get the right look, they love to hit Kittle down the field. Garoppolo throwing and it is incomplete at about the 10 yard line intended for Ayuk. It'll be third and seven. Yeah, they really like to hit Kittle and, and run their four vertical package. and and try and take shots at the end zone. That time again, you know, Cincinnati secondary has really done a pretty good job of taking away the deep stuff in this game and you know, really forcing everything underneath. Look at third down for both teams has not been kind today. San Francisco 0 of 5. And a big reason for that is that both teams have done a pretty good job up front getting pressure on the quarterback without blitzing. And we get a timeout called by the Bengals. Final charge timeout, Cincinnati. This is a 30 second timeout. So it'll be a half minute on the clock and third and seven when play resumes. You know, so many things can impact. Boy, I thought, I thought Kyle Shanahan did a great job of explaining to us how one injury in a certain part of the team affects another position and then another and well this is a guy that you usually would have on punt returns or kickoff returns except now you need him as a wide receiver so you can't put him back there it, that's and he was referring to you know how it affects special teams especially when you get injured at, at you know running back and linebacker 
you know, the, the backups of those positions are your core special teams guys. So when your starters get hurt, now those guys have to go play as a starter. It really affects the depth, and, and that's one of the reasons why they've had some special teams problems this year. Hey, hey, right here, Big play here, third and seven. Garoppolo pulls it down, now throws it is incomplete. Garoppolo under pressure, and now there is a late flag thrown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting. Defense number 24. The Phillies have the distance to the goal. First down. That's Vaughn Bell guilty. And there's the taunt. And then the, there's the point. And number 37 isn't going to let that fly. Just what a. Oh, I know it's tough in the heat of the moment. It can't look, be that tough. Uh, Arch. It is, you know. It's look. How many? I mean, how many times do you have to be told not to do it? And and look. And who knows? I mean, we still have a few seconds to see how badly it's going to cost the Bengals here. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's you got to know better. Whoa. That's for sure. But that was. Lego. Well, that could have been huge, especially if San Francisco can capitalize here before halftime. Garoppolo, all kinds of time, and now throws this side of the field. The catch is made by Kittle. Touchdown. Now they're talking it over on the near side of the field. One official has ruled touchdown. Well, the question is, did, was, did he reach it over before his knee was down? Was he able to get the ball across, you know, the plane? And it's, this starts with protection. I mean, Garoppolo had all day. And Awujie, it looks like somebody dropped the coverage. I couldn't quite tell with. Watch. Somebody dropped the coverage. Awujie tried to recover, and I think that the ball was across well, yeah, before his knee hit. You're right. The question is, did the ball go over before Kittle's knee went down right there? There it is. I think that's the best view right there, and I think from that angle, it looks like. Yep, there it is. Mm. Critical mistake. Credit San Francisco for taking advantage of that mistake, but you know Zach Taylor is going to be beside himself here before halftime. Over a number of things. Over a lot of stuff. You know, you had a chance really to go at the minimum 10 6 going into halftime, but you muffed a punt and then a taunting penalty when you should be able to get off the field and San Francisco scores on the next play. Christmas coming. Play a game. Offense. Five yard penalty on the track. Christmas coming a little early for the 49ers. So this extra point. Attempt will be backed up. This will now be a 38 yard attempt. Robbie Hole got it inside the left upright. So it is good. Gene Steratore. What did you see on that? A great play by by Kittle and just the reaction of being able to reach right before the knee hits in great position by the field judge Terry Brown backing away from the goal line leaving that space and getting that distance so that he can rule on both the knee and the position of the ball. It's just a great play by the player and a really good job by the official in real time. And Gene the taunting call on Von Bell apparently there's no severity to it. You either do or you don't right. It seems that way Greg you know some of these to me appear like human reaction and just a, a very quick it's a reactionary thing but look we do know by week 15 they have put a major emphasis on it there has been zero tolerance 
and they are definitely following through with that directive. For me, I, I would like to see a little leeway in this with the emotion of the game, but they have been consistent in calling even the most subtle of things, and this is a big call in this game. It is indeed. Gino, thank you. Well, I think I would, I would concur with, with Gino on that. I know that, you know, by the letter of the law, but it's, you know, it's, not everybody has your level of restraint. Ooh. Most oh. ball inside the 20. Let's see if he's marked down before the ball came loose. Oh, my. The runners rolled down by contact. First down, Cincinnati. Oh, wow. Demetrius Flanagan fouls with the hit. I think Zach Taylor is going to ask somebody oh, to wake him I up. Mean, yeah, Gene. So if Gene's with us, I see the elbow hit coming down before that ball comes out. Is that correct? Yeah, Adam, typical case that the ground can't cause a fumble, and when that forearm lands, still in possession. So the ball popping out at that point, he's down because of the contact with the forearm. Man, what a half for the Bengals special teams. I mean, Zach Taylor, the head coach of the Bengals, may take out a wall or two on his way to the mm -mm. locker room. Mm -mm. I'm pretty sure that the uh, 49ers special team unit is fired up, you know, after <laughs> the last couple games. But boy, oh boy. Yeah, their last their last outing was the loss to the Seattle Seahawks, and they figured it's just it was a giveaway. That it was a giveaway as a football game that they had and lost. And as the final seconds tick away, it's a half best forgotten by the Cincinnati Bengals. 17 to 6, the 49ers in the lead. Halftime is next after these first half highlights from Verizon and a word from your local station. This season, Crown Royal is supporting the small places that make game day big. Join us to unlock your support at kickoff with crown.com. Back in Cincinnati at halftime, San Francisco leading the Bengals by a score of 17-6. Craig Gumbo along with Adam Archuleta. I don't know where to start about the first half that we saw in this game. So many mistakes, so many uh, goofy plays. It, it wasn't solid football. Right, and really the way I look at it, it's a 17-6 game, and you're looking at four plays. You get the two muff punts, and then you get the two big plays off of that for San Francisco to capitalize, and they've gotten 10 points off of those muff punts. The first one... Really a nice play, a little jet motion, handed off to Debo Samuels. And he's going to go 27 yards around the corner for San Francisco's first. And then so a really nice job in protection. Garoppolo's just going to scan the field and then hit Kittle crossing the field. Just before his knee hits, he crosses the ball over the goal line. And that's really, Greg, the difference in the game. Four plays. Really sloppy and really disappointing for Cincinnati's special teams. This will not be brought back. Goes through the end zone and go down to A.J. Well, Greg, Bengals coach Zach Taylor told us coming into this game that turnovers have been this team's Achilles heel. He was beat red when he talked about giving up 10 points off those two muff punts. He said there will definitely be a new punt returner in this second half. As for the Niners, Kyle Shanahan said thank goodness for those turnovers. They went 0 for 6 on third down. They have to find a way to be more productive on their own, guys. Wow, A.J., thank you. Out across the 30 to the 31 yard line is Joe Mixon to get things started here in the second half. Yeah, that's not a surprise. Change in, in, in special teams. You just you just can't make mistakes like that, mm -hmm. especially deep in your own territory. You don't really see it. I, I mean, it's pretty rare. I'd have to really go back and see, you know. How many times and how many games over the years, really the same returner twice in one half, you know, muffed a punt return and gave it over to the other team. It just, it really doesn't happen very often. And Phillips has generally been pretty good in that position. Mix it again. And not much there at all, if anything. The line of scrimmage will be a 32. Eric Armstead with the stop. Uh, and really, outside of, of those two plays and the big plays from San Francisco, 
you know, the rest of the game, really, the story is third down for both football teams. You know, both teams have really struggled today on their third go, 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 go. downs. And, you know, for the Bengals, that's one of the big reasons. Lack of possessions and lack of sustaining drives. They just can't run their offense. On third and three, they're going to run. Getting it out to about the 33 and a half or 34 yard line is P. Ryan, but that's not going to be enough for a first down. And here comes the punting unit, and the Bengals fans are not real happy with the way things are going right now. No, it's it's really it's been a pretty conservative first half for Cincinnati, and you've seen it in their their decisions on whether or not to go for it on fourth down. You see it on that third down handoff. And right now, you just got to like the way the front seven from San Francisco, the way they're playing. Brandon Ayuk calls for the fair catch. Makes it. Look, someone held on to a punt. The 25 yard line. We're coming back after this. Back here live at Paul Brown Stadium, where just before the half, we saw Bengals defensive end Trey Hendrickson go down and go into the locker room. I'm being told he has a back injury and will be out for the remainder of this game. Cam Sample is now in to replace him, guys. Yeah, that thanks, AJ. That is a big, big yeah. loss for that defensive front. Trey Hendrickson and his 12 and a half sacks. Play fit. Garoppolo. That pass is caught over the middle. Debo Sample with the catch, and he is all the way out to about the 47-yard line. Well, one thing's for sure, when you play San Francisco, you could pretty much count on Samuel dominating the middle. I mean, you just see this so often, and, and really, when you watch Garoppolo, he has no fear, especially when Samuel is in the game. Just throws it over the middle in super tight windows, and it doesn't get really any better from from a big play production standpoint than Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel with his first catch today, and this is Jeff Wilson up the middle. Tripped up by Joe Bocci. And just like that, the 49ers cross midfield, and they are in Cincinnati territory at the 40. Seven yard line and you see that that one drive where they were able to go 75 yards and get that touchdown is They kind of to start out the second quarter it really started the run game started working and that's how they got Samuel on the edge on that 27 yard touchdown On the ground with Wilson and Wilson twists his way inside the 45 to the 44 and that'll be looks like about a yard short of a first down you know, that's really, when you look at Elijah Mitchell and just how good he's been for this San Francisco running game, it's really his big play ability. 23 times he's gone over 10 yards, and really it's Debo Samuel who's taken over as the big play weapon with Mitchell out of the lineup. Garoppolo with the keeper and the first down. So it's looking a bit more with the help of the turnovers that the 49ers have found a little bit more of their rhythm, certainly, than the Bengals have been able to find. It's, look, Kyle Shanahan knows that in this game, you know, being so, you know, undermanned and, you know, having new pieces at the running back spot, that he's going to have to get creative. And, and when they when they call up the special plays, the special game plan plays, they've got to hit them, and so far they've done that. That quick pass is complete to Kittle, and look at Kittle go after he has the football. To about the 21 yard line. Jesse Bates with the tackle. It's just hard play action. And then he almost throws this blind right off of the play action. It's if he doesn't even read the defense, he's just going to set it and hit it. And, you know, that's really, that's where the production comes in this passing game. Garoppolo is a play action quarterback, and he has two players, both Kittle and Samuel, who just do their best work over the middle and have been so productive. This is Samuel, and Samuel pumped out of bounds. You know, when we talked with George Kittle, he, he admitted he, he, he brings that same vicious attitude to blocking <laughs> as he does with yards after the catch. It is, and really when you watch this offense, you know, from a, when you take a, a, an average path depth, pass depth from the quarterback, it's Garoppolo's a short game quarterback, 
but their big play production, the yards after the catch, both by Samuel and Kittle, as good as there is in the NFL. So they get a lot of big plays. It's not from throwing the ball down the field. It's from both of these players, how good they are with the ball in their hands. Garoppolo looks right, now left, and throws straight ahead, and that's incomplete. Don't know who that was intended for, but there were a lot of players in the middle of that field. Just really nice coverage from Cincinnati, and there was really nowhere for Garoppolo to throw the football. So now he's faced with a third and 13. Again, this you know hasn't been where they do their best work. You know, this is a, a down in distance where you know they'd like to get Brandon Ayuk. This is really kind of why they drafted him, is the one guy that could beat man coverage, the one guy that can really run all the route tree, but you know, they need a, a third down specialist, somebody that can get open and separate, and that has to be what Ayuk develops into. Garoppolo over the middle, and he's got Kittle. Kittle inside the 10 to the 8. It'll be first and goal. Now, really, this is a tremendous throw from Garoppolo. Blitz, and he just stands in the pocket. Because the safety blitzed, there's nobody in the middle. So just an excellent job of reading it. Jesse Bates is right up in Garoppolo's face. And then there's just too much separation right there. Kittle open and delivers on a huge third and 13. 16 yard pickup. First and goal for the 49ers at the eight yard line. This is Debo Samuel. May have gotten as far as the six yard line before he was driven back. Yeah, I also thought it was pretty interesting in talking to Kyle Shanahan about, you know, Samuel and using him at running back. And he said he's probably their, their most natural runner with the ball in his hands. It's not something you see very often. Somebody who can excel when you split them out, but then you use him as a traditional running back. Now, he's normally going to hit the edge, but as you saw right there, they don't hesitate by running him up inside either. <laughs> On second and goal, Garoppolo to throw, far side of the field. Caught on the far side was the inbound. Touchdown, <laughs> Brandon Ayuk. Hell yeah! Officials still having a conversation about it, but the initial call was touchdown. Oh, what a throw and catch. Play action, and he's going to run a speed out, and oh, boy. There is a left foot. Oh, Gene Steratore, are you with us? I think it's going to yes, be. Yes, I am, Greg. I'm going to listen to Adam. Go ahead, Adam. I think it's going to be. I think we've only got one foot down, guys, and, and no body part. We'll get right back to you, Gene. We'll take a break. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by KFC. Order on KFC.com or through the app. Hyundai. And by The Home Depot. How doers get more done. The call has been overturned. It is no touchdown. And now Kyle Juszczyk in the backfield along with Garoppolo on third and goal from the six. Garoppolo with plenty of time. All kinds of time now rolling and throwing at the goal line incomplete. Intended for use check. And I, I felt like he had use check out of the backfield. Watch this. Use check is going to just hook up in the end zone as Garoppolo is sliding to his left. I felt like he had him right there. You see him? And for some reason, he just doesn't pull the trigger. He tries to reverse field and squeeze it in there. But they had an opportunity right there to get the ball to his fullback. So here's Robbie Gold from 24 yards out for the field goal. And it's good. And with 7.43 to play, San Francisco extends its lead to 20 to 6. Let's go back to the touchdown that was called a touchdown and then ruled not a touchdown. Gene Steratore. 
Uh, to me, uh, Greg, pretty quick ruling. It should be a quick, pretty quick reversal. Brandon Ayuk gets possession, but we can clearly see one foot down and no other body part. This is where you have one official looking at the ball. The official in the back of the end line should be looking at the feet, and, and you'd like to see this play get corrected on the field in real time because it's clearly just one foot and then the body's in the white. So good ruling, a reversal of incomplete. Gene, anybody ever tell you you would make a terrific sky judge? <laughs> it's much easier, uh, Adam. I can tell you I enjoy working from the chair as opposed to running around on the field as well. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. San Francisco's lead is now 20 to 6. Stanley Morgan awaits the kick. Let this one fly into and through the end zone. It has been, as usual, a pretty big and important day in the National Football League. From earlier today, Lamar Jackson hurt an ankle, hmm. left the game. They will evaluate that ankle, but it was an invitation to the Cleveland Browns to knock off the Ravens. Kansas City Chiefs didn't have much problem with the Raiders today. They won their sixth in a row. And Washington staged a comeback that fell short and lost to the Dallas Cowboys. Jacksonville continuing to have problems. Shut out. Ooh. Burrow goes down. Nick Bosa. For Bosa, that'll be his 13th sack of the season. Illegal hands. Hands to the face. Defense, number 20. It's a five-yard penalty. Oh Automatic. First down. So Ambry Thomas. Boy, the rookie out of Michigan. Well, that's the second time. Huge play for Thomas. He's trying to jam, and his, his target is too high. He's trying to punch on Chase, and that's the second time. Remember, the first time was an interception, and, and that time you really erase the sack from Bosa. So two critical, critical penalties from the third rounder, and Bengals get a first down. Mixon. Kwan Williams with the tackle in the AFC Cincinnati number six seed as things stand right now oh boy boy how how do things change because for really the first half it was you know Buffalo looked unbeatable and then Kansas City was like hey they've got a Super Bowl hangover and now it's completely reversed Kansas City looking like they're getting better at the right time and Buffalo really struggling on second and six, Burrow throwing, and that is complete. And across the 40-yard line, out to the 45, and getting more is C.J. Uzama. And the Bengals desperately need some kind of a spark. Well, they do. That is just a really nice effort. You know, what San Francisco is doing is they're really protecting their corners. They're playing their safeties over the top, and... I think for that reason, they're trying to attack more to the inside. The fact that both T. Higgins and Jamar Chase only each have one catch, you've got to find a way to get the ball into their hands. They're your best players. Burrow. Short pop over the middle, in and out of the arms. That is incomplete. P. Ryan. See, here's a really good example. They're going to try and get out here, but look at the safeties. There's nowhere to go. And so right now, you know, they're trying to get the ball down the field, but both safeties in really good position. It's a two man route. And really, they're having a tough time feeding the ball to the outside and beating that cover two look. So naturally, the plays to be made are more in the middle of the field. Burrow on second and 10. Now for and that is complete. That's T. Higgins. And Higgins to the 35-yard line in the first down. I know, Arch, you're a big believer in saying you've got to throw the ball down there just to show that you can do it yeah. or that you're willing to do it. Absolutely. And just look, you know, your two best receivers, you know, your playmakers are Higgins and Chase. And so somehow they've got to get the ball to them. And you've got to attack the secondary who has struggled at cornerback. 
you know, right now they're really protecting the corner, so naturally the throws are going to be more inside, working on the linebackers, or trying to hit the corner out on the sideline between the corner and the safety. This is Piran. Piran dragging tacklers with him inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. Kwan Williams again in on the play. And, and you would also like that if San Francisco is going to play this, especially on first down, if they're going to play their safeties back, you'd like to think that you could run the football with a lighter box, you know, with one less guy down low to account for the run game. But you've got to make San Francisco pay for keeping their safeties back and protecting the corners. Boy, talk about a game not going according to script. The Bengals average 27.6 points a game. They have two field goals so far. Burrow throwing out here. That is complete. And tackled just before he reaches the 25 is Jamar Chase. Well, that's really a nice tackle from Marcel Harris, who didn't play last week because of a concussion. And that's a lot of speed right there that you've got to make up running from inside out in an excellent open field tackle. Jamar Chase thinks that, you know, he should have been able to at least pick up the first down, but an excellent play by Harris. So instead of a first down and a big gainer, it's a third and one. The pitch for Piran. Fights his way inside to the 25 yard line, but that's enough for a first down. Kevin Givens with the tackle. A really nice effort because the rookie Hufonga, he gets penetration and almost makes P. Ryan try to alter his path. But P. Ryan is a tough inside runner. He's done a really nice job on third down here for the Bengals and picks up a big first down. Mixon now back in the lineup. Yeah, yeah. And it is Mixon. Mixon stood up at about the line of scrimmage. Fred Warner leading the way. Well, this is really well played by Fred Warner. Watch number 54 just going to play off the block and then just bam. One-on-one, -on -one, stand him up and make the play. You know, Warner, who was so good last year, not really having the season that he would like this year, but... It certainly has the talent and has a chance to really play well down the stretch. Burrow, far side, that's complete. This is Mixon, and Mixon hit hard as he reaches the 20 yard line. Ball will be placed just inside the 20 yard line. Are there enough 49ers there to meet the ball? We have a player down on the field, and we'll check it out and be right back. San Francisco linebacker Aziz Al-Shair was the injured player, walked off the field under his own power. But he'll be looked at on the sideline. Meanwhile, Burrow and the Bengals, third and five. With both these safeties back, look for them to target the middle and work on the linebackers. Burrow under pressure and goes down close to the 30. The ball is loose but covered by the Bengals. Samson Ebukam, number 56. It really starts Ebukam. He, he cleans it up, but really it starts inside by Bosa, and I believe that's Eric Armstead. Uh, no, excuse me, that's not Armstead, that's Arden Key, but really it starts with Bosa and Key. They're going to crash inside. That immediate penetration is what makes Burrow try to flush, and then now you can come over the top and clean it up. Really well done on third down by the 49er pass rush. McPherson from 46 yards out. And he missed that one. He was good from 37, good from 28. But it's another failed trip into the red zone for the Cincinnati Bengals. 20 to 6, San Francisco.
A minute 13 to play here in the third. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Old Navy. Happy Holidays. And by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Super Bowl 23 in Miami 49ers beat the Bengals 20 to 16 Joe Montana's game winning TD pass John Taylor with 34 seconds left you can feel our friend Boomer Esiason cringing a little bit back in New York because they had this one right up until they did this is Jeff Wilson Wilson just across the 40 to about the 41 yard line that was Bill Walsh's last game as 49ers head coach by the way. So one thing that coaches point to is not getting the maximum from opportunities and you can't say that the Bengals have been able to do that with three field goals coming out of the red zone today. Yeah well again just I think when you look at it the 49er defense today has been phenomenal. They've really played a nice game. This is Wilson. And Wilson diving forward to about the 44. And we'll see if that's the last play of the third quarter. Look at Joe Burrow. Oh, and they're coming to the line in a hurry. Yeah, on third and two. They're just trying to get, get a cheap five yards before the fourth quarter. And time runs out. Here in the third quarter, it'll be third and two when we come back. Back to Cincinnati after this message and a word from your local station. This is the NFL on CBS. We're in Cincinnati with our producer, Jonathan Siegel, our director, Mark Grant, Greg Gumbel, Adam Archuleta, A.J. Ross. We go to the fourth quarter. San Francisco with the ball. And you look at those numbers, that's not very inspiring for the Bengals. Samuel ooh, turning the corner across the 45. Gathers the ball in. He's going to be marked down at the 47 yard line. Well, they had a chance. The Bengals really had a chance. Mike Hilton, he just shoots the gap. But a guy like Samuel, you know that unless you get great body contact, if you just dive at his legs, I mean, he's just so good that there's no way you're going to bring him down. But that was a really good opportunity for Mike Hilton to make a huge play in the backfield. But Samuel is just too good on the outside. On first down. Garoppolo lost the football and had to cover it up. Back at the 37 yard line. But he just, the ball just slips out of his hands. Hubbard is coming around from his left side. I think he just kind of sees Hubbard. And then as he tries to make a move out of the pocket, the ball just slips out of his hands. And boy, he is really lucky that, you know, Hubbard or Reeder wasn't able to jump on that football. But, but that could have been a catastrophe. In this game, Arch, that's, that's just another play. <laughs> exactly. That's, you're right. It is. Uh, it's really on, it's as they say on brand for this game second and 20 now Garoppolo over the middle and that's George Kittle boy is he reliable or what mm -hmm. football's iconic show inside the NFL streaming Tuesdays 930 on Paramount Plus Boy, I tell you what uh, you know Garoppolo really is when he throws the ball over the middle He's got such confidence in Kittle and Samuel. Some of the throws that he makes is pretty incredible. And that was a really tight window. Bates had good coverage, but he's just able to fit that in there. Three for 10 on third down today for San Francisco. Hasty in the backfield. Garoppolo under pressure, bumped around and goes down. Larry Ogunjobi led the way. But a little life coming to the Bengals courtesy of their defense. And as you mentioned, 
just a few minutes ago, they've played really well today. Well, first it comes from Hubbard, and then that's going to allow Ogan Joby the time to work up inside. So Hubbard gets really good speed off the edge, but the excellent push inside for Ogan Joby, and he gets his five and a half sacks for the season. Hendrickson has played a big role, but so has Ogan Joby as a presence on the inside for Cincinnati. Tyler Boyd is deep for the Bengals inside his own 20 yard line. Fair catch call for and he lets it bounce and it'll roll out of bounds right around the 34 yard line. Cincinnati Bengals in need of a spark on offense now. Off just a 29-yard punt by Mitch Wisnowski. The Cincinnati Bengals now with the ball at their own 34-yard line. Burrow, 14 of 19 for 138 yards so far today. Mixon. Mixon with lots of running room. Busts it up the middle across midfield and into San Francisco territory at the 49-yard line. So, Greg, to me, Cincinnati has to take advantage of this coverage. Here's where it's open, and they had a chance to hit Jamar Chase on the corner route, but for some reason, Burrow wasn't able to pull the trigger. They're going to have to get back to that play. There it is. Going the other way, T. Higgins with the catch. So here it is, the same exact play they didn't hit Chase. This time, they're going to hit Tiggins and hit the spot in the corner. That's the soft spot down the field when they play this coverage. Right there, the corner, he doesn't get his depth, and there's the timing that you need to make them pay for playing over the top and protecting those corners. Higgins now three catches for 66 yards. Burrow to throw on first down. I mean, this way, this time, and the dive doesn't work for Higgins. It'll be second and ten. You know, as I look at this game, a couple things. Uh, you really got to credit San Francisco up front because they've really done a nice job putting pressure on Joe Burrow. Their pressure rate is almost at about 50 percent for this game. You know, Nick Bosa has just been all over the football field. He only really has half of a sack. One of his sacks was taken away because of a penalty, but he has had a factor in a lot of the 49er pressure up front. Isaiah Prince is in it, right tackle for the Bengals, and they run this one. Pirine, and Pirine is stacked up just short of the 20-yard line. Eric Armstead leading the charge for the defense. Third and nine. Getting pretty close to that point where <laughs> I think the Bengals are going to have to start converting some trips down deep into this end of the yeah. field. And first and foremost, they've got to deal with pressure. San Francisco pressure on third down has been over the top. Burrow throws it out. Piran trying to get loose. Will fall forward to about the, oh, about the 17-yard line. Fourth down. Yeah, he's been conservative, but at this point, really, I, I don't really think you have a chance. You've got to get something going. And, and just once again on that third down, Nick Bosa coming around the edge has pretty much been unblockable. He's aligned on both sides. He's aligned on the left side of the offense and on the right side and has had a lot of success going against both tackles. And right now he's aligned. They need the 12-yard line for a first down. Burrow circling back and looking and throwing. End zone. It is caught at the back of the end zone by Jamar Chase for the touchdown. How's that for making something happen? Well, here it is. They're going to run the corner. Okay, and then now you've got the rookie, Hufanga, 
as soon as Burrow starts to scramble around, you're going to see Chase up at the top right. He's just going to uncover. He's just going to sneak back inside. Hufanga tries to recover, and then that's just Burrow throwing a dart when he absolutely has to make a throw. And did Jamar Chase go out of bounds is going to really be the big, close. big question. Yeah. It's going to be worth a look in a replay. And right there you see it, it looks to me just at a quick glance toes are in and the heel never hit the ground outside. Right there at the right foot right there. And so that's the question from the other angle. It doesn't look like the heel ever touches any part of the white. And just incredible just by a centimeter. Boy, yeah. when they had to have it, they came through with a huge throw and catch. It is confirmed as a touchdown. The extra point is good. So the Cincinnati Bengals, just like that, bounce back with 9.20 to play in the fourth quarter. They're down a touchdown, 20 to 13. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Amazon, where you can find epic daily deals. Royal Caribbean, rise to the vacation, come seek, and by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Back in Cincinnati, it took a terrific scramble and throw to that man, Jamar Chase, to put the Bengals right back into the picture. Hasty. From the two. Breaks it to the outside. Across the 25, out of bounds at about the 26 yard line. Wednesday, the season finale is here. Find out who will be the sole survivor and win the million dollar prize. And then, after the big reveal, take a deep dive into the season on the Survivor After Show, immediately following the Survivor season finale, Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. I already know the answer. I'm not even going to ask you. No, I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't? No. Your social game would be so good. Greg, you would dominate the social game. Sure, if I survive. But they'd probably vote you out on the first day because of your celebrity status. I'd, I'd vote myself out on the first day. Jeff Wilson in the backfield. Garoppolo throwing. That is complete. Far side of the field, George Kittle. Out to about the 39-yard line where Jermaine Pratt made the tackle. Take a look at the standings in the AFC North. Baltimore losing today. Cincinnati. Trying to pull into a tie with a comeback win here. Well, and not to mention, you don't even know what the status of Lamar Jackson is. That that pretty much changes everything for Baltimore. So I don't think it can be any overstated one bit how important this game is for Cincinnati. Bengals looking again to their defense to put the clamps on the 49ers. Play clock running down. This is Wilson. And Wilson stood up as he approached the 40 yard line. He'll be marked down at the 40. BJ Hill led the charge. Uh, really nice. Garoppolo changes the play, runs a toss to the right side, and there's a lot of Bengal defenders right there. And, you know, really the offense, you know, they've been able to capitalize and get 10 points off of the muff punts. But they've only ran the ball so far for 89 yards. Garoppolo has about 147 yards passing. You know, they're going to have to make some plays right here, especially in the passing game, because I don't know if they can just count on their typical run game to try and close this out in the fourth quarter. Second and nine, and now a timeout is called. As the 49ers use one with 7.36 to play here in the fourth. Next Sunday, the NFL playoff hunt continues on CBS. Key games include the Steelers looking to keep their postseason hopes alive against the Tennessee Titans. These Bengals on the road for a battle with the Broncos get set for kickoff beginning at noon Eastern with JB and the guys on the NFL today, next Sunday on CBS. We're talking about how important this game is, Arch. 
not only do the Bengals travel to Denver next week, but after that, they have Baltimore, Kansas City, Cleveland. <laughs> Yeah, hey, look, this, I mean, this, it doesn't get any bigger right now. Both football teams, you know, San Francisco has a really good chance to make the playoffs, but, you know, Bengals, really, there's an opportunity here in the AFC North. Garoppolo with time over the middle off the fingertips of his intended receiver at midfield, and that was Kittle. Well, what a shot from Jermaine Pratt, and, and this ball's just thrown with a little bit more accuracy. Kittle's going to have a chance to really bring this down. You see the ball is thrown high and to the left. Kittle does his best to try and bring that down, but, you know, really that's a throw. You bring that down, hit Kittle in the strike zone, and all of a sudden you have a first down at the middle of the field. But you just saw Joe Burrow make a huge third down throw when they needed it. Garoppolo has to do the same right here for San Francisco. Third and nine. Running out of time and going down. B.J. Hill again. Uh, he's just going to fight through it, fight the double team. You know, his job is really to set up the inside move by Hubbard and draw the double team, but really it's because of his effort to just fight right through the right guard and right tackle. He's able to split them. Hubbard gets great push, but there's nowhere for Garoppolo to go. So for a, a Bengal defense that lost their best pass rusher and Trey Hendrickson because of a back injury earlier, they have really been able to get after Garoppolo with the other players on this front four. Four sacks today for the Bengals. Tyler Boyd goes down to just about the 30-yard line. Well, the Bengals, well, they've had their chances. You can't say they haven't had their chances today, Arch. They certainly did earlier. This one was a big one. This would have been an incredible catch, but what looked like was a catch, ruled incomplete. And then another chance to get three points on the board. That's really a chance for 10 points and you're sitting here down by seven points but you've started to heat up a little bit here in the fourth quarter burrow on the slant and across the 40 enough for a first down goes jamar chase so here's the question greg for D'Amico ryan's the defensive coordinator for san francisco You've had a pretty good game plan so far by protecting your corners and getting good pressure up front with your front four. But in their last couple of drives, Cincinnati have seemed to find the recipe. So do you change it up or continue to make them be patient down the field? Burrow sets up the screen for Mixon, and Mixon tripped up just short of midfield. They'll mark him down at about the 48 and a half yard line. Ambry Thomas with the tackle. It really, at some point, I know that you're trying to protect the corners. The corners haven't really played there this year. You're undermanned. You've got some young guys out there. But at some point, you know, you're going to have to have some trust that they could play on an island and make a play if they get attacked downfield. Second and five. Burrow slapped this side of the field, and Jamar chased the intended receiver. That's incomplete. Well, Kwan Williams really flashes right in front of Jamar Chase. And just a small little window. I mean, Josh Norman really is all over him. That was draped all over Jamar Chase. But, you know, he's your guy. You drafted him, and he had such a great start to this season. Was really quiet before that last touchdown, but... He's got to have a big part here in the fourth quarter for Cincinnati. Chase, four catches for 45 yards and a touchdown. Third and five, under pressure. Burrow goes down. K1 Williams out of the secondary. Slot blitz. This is really well timed. Blitz by D'Amico Ryans. And there's no running back in the backfield. So there's nobody to account. For K1 Williams. There was a bust in the protection. You have a free hitter, and now San Francisco, when they have to make a play, the seventh year vet gets a big sack on Joe Burrow. Brandon Ayuk back for the punt. This one will bounce. 
take a Cincinnati roll. Gathered in at about the 15 yard line, and Ayuk has nowhere to go. Good coverage on special teams. Once again, the playoff picture in the AFC. Cincinnati with a comeback win here would pull even with Baltimore atop the AFC North. Both these teams in the number six seed in their respective conference. And I want to say that, you know, coming into this, into Sunday, San Francisco, you know, the math, you know how I love math, said they had about a 66% chance of making it to the playoffs. And then, you know, that Washington loss really gives them a gift and really helps out their chances. So both teams really coming into this game in very similar situations. Pretty two even match teams, and we're seeing that play out here today. Jeff Wilson trying to turn the corner and it succeeds. As he walks the sideline, he's out of bounds. We go to New York once again. James Brown, coach Bill Cowher. Bills within 10. Yeah, you're going to see Josh Allen find Dawson Knox from 15 yards out, and they cut the Tampa Bay lead from 27 to 17. 9.07 left in regulation, Greg Gumbel. Thank you, JB. Thank you, coach. 11 plays run in this quarter by San Francisco, a total of six yards on those 11 plays. Second and two here. And Wilson will get the first down and then some. Out to about the 29-yard line. Well, that, that two-play sequence, it doesn't look like much. Just a couple of, you know, five or six-yard runs. But that is a really important start to this drive for San Francisco because you just kind of got the sense that Cincinnati was starting to get some confidence and some momentum. And you just spoke about the lack of offense that San Francisco has had. So for them to pick up a first down on their first two plays to get this drive started goes a real long way to kind of settle this offense and let them get into this drive. And taking some minutes off the clock. Coming up on 345 to play. Wilson again. And he is hit as he crosses the 30 yard line. Now, the Bengals, all three of their timeouts remaining. When does Zach Taylor start to use those? Well, generally you wait till you're you're under the three minute mark before you start to use your timeouts. I'll, now, I'll ask you in 25 seconds. Yeah, I mean, generally that's when when you do it. Now it, it goes, it will go a real long way here. If you can get a stop or a negative play to put them in a third and long, now San Francisco has to make a decision. Do they pass it, risk an incomplete pass, or do they run it? You know, that's really the question. Play fake. Garoppolo trying to avoid the pressure, and he can't get away. And now a timeout is called. The Bengals use their first timeout here in the second half. Well, Ogan Joby, one more time, just his presence inside. He's just going to bull Daniel Brunskill right back into Jimmy Garoppolo. Look at that power and leverage. Garoppolo tries to get up inside the pocket, and then everybody is there. And I just said that right before this play. If you're able to get that negative play and put them in a third and long situation, now you put Kyle Shanahan, you know, you got to throw the ball to try and pick up a first down. The clock stops, and Cincinnati gets to save a timeout. That is the fifth sack of the day for the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, really, it comes down to this, and I said it before that last drive, where Garoppolo is going to have to make the right read. He's been under a lot of pressure. But he's going to have to come up with a big time throw on this down. As time throws, Kittle and Kittle reaching for the first down. Did he get there? I think he's just a little bit short. <laughs> that was close. George Kittle, all six foot four, 250 pounds of him, couldn't quite get to the flag. And Zach Taylor. Now feels like he has been robbed of a few seconds on the clock. Says he had a timeout. Oh, 
Zach Taylor probably wondering where's replay when you need it. Now they have made the adjustment on the clock and they put 250 now mm, to that's play. A huge, huge difference. It really, because of that sack, that sack really saved Zach Taylor so much time. All's well that ends with a smile. Fourth and two. San Francisco going to punt it away, and Joe Burrow feels like it's going to have a chance to do something special in the last couple of minutes. Tyler Boyd is deep. Fair catch called four. And made inside the 15 yard line. That's a pretty good kick. And here comes Burrow in the offense. So in a game that has that had so many quirks and, and, <laughs> and misplays in the first half, yeah. it's it's kind of amazing that the that the Bengals have a shot here in the final couple of minutes, and that's thanks to their defense. Well, that's, you know we got two two evenly matched football teams that both in similar positions, fighting to make the playoffs. Really comes down to who's going to make those plays in the fourth quarter. As I see it, it comes down to pressure. Can Cincinnati block, or can the 49ers get to Burrow? Burrow. At the five yard line. Clock continues to move, two and a half to play. They don't have an answer for Nick Bosa. It doesn't matter where he lines up. He lines over on the right side, on the left side, but he has made a permanent home in that Cincinnati backfield. Once again, gets to Burrow. Burrow out of the end zone. And across the 10, out across the 15 yard line is Uzama. Incredible. And we're coming up on two minutes to play. The two minute warning will bring the next whistle. And here we go. 20 to 13. San Francisco in the lead. Cincinnati needing something to happen here in the final two minutes. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon. The official 5G network of the NFL. And by Best Buy. Welcome back to Paul Brown Stadium. Two minutes to play. Cincinnati with the ball, one timeout remaining. And a third and six from their own 17 yard line. Burrow under pressure, throwing over the middle, that's complete. The catch is made by T. Higgins out across the 35 to the 39 yard line. Clock continues to move. Boy, Nick Bosa was right there. I thought he was going to get the ball out of Burrow's hands, but what a strike. Burrow, quick pass incomplete. Intended for Uzama and knocked down by Jimmy Ward. Second and ten that stops the clock with 136 to play. <laughs> what a huge play on third and six. Boy, it, it has not been pretty today. It's been a tough, tough go for Burrow and the passing game. But you know, you just love that when when he's had to make a couple huge plays, the, the escape the rush on that touchdown to Jamar Chase, and then another just perfect throw on third and six on that last play to Higgins. Going deep. Down the right side, that is incomplete. A little contact on the far side, no flag. T. Higgins being covered by Ambry Thomas. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes and NASA's plan to look back in time. It's followed by the CBS original movie, A Christmas Proposal, plus NCIS Hawaii. It's tonight on CBS. 131 on the clock and a big third and 10 facing Burrow. And the Bengals. Do you go for all 10 yards here? Well, if you can get it, yeah, absolutely. If you're San Francisco, you got to make sure you give your depth, play from deep to short, come up and tackle. Burrow down the sideline. That is complete. And out of bounds short of the 30 yard line. Tyler Boyd with the catch. And what a throw by Burrow under pressure. 
Well, here's taking advantage of too deep coverage one more time. Josh Norman is underneath. You have the safety over the top, under pressure, and they just run a scissors route. They run a post to the inside. They switch it, run Boyd to the corner. And one more time, that's the throw I've been talking about since the third quarter. That's where the throw is. It's the corner out behind the corner and in front of the safety. And Burroughs hit that a couple times here in the fourth quarter. He barely got that pass off. Burrow throwing the other way. Corner. Top. Jamar Chase. Touchdown. been looking for it Greg they finally got the single coverage and Chase is just gonna do he is so good at running the go route they finally got the coverage no safety over the top they're gonna run a double move and we're tied at 20 <laughs> and Joe Burrow cold-blooded in the fourth quarter set it up perfectly they've been protecting Ambry Thomas going to run a slant and going to run a go, and that time Jamar Chase runs right by him, right by the rookie. And tell you what, it's what you look for in a quarterback when it's been tough all day long and you've had to be at your best. Critical third downs in the fourth quarter and just big time throw after big time throw. Now it's time for Garoppolo to try and respond. A minute 19 remains. Jermichael Hasty deep. Two yards deep in the end zone. 20. Up to the 22 yard line. And now here's Jimmy Garoppolo, San Francisco, with a minute 15 on the clock and two timeouts. If you're looking for field goal range, Robbie Gold's long this season is 52. He's hit from 50 twice. But we aren't there yet. Well, look, this offense is not built on the big play down the field. It's built on yards after the catch. I said it before, earlier in the fourth quarter. I'll say it again. Garoppolo, he's going to have to do exactly what Burrow just did and make some huge throws to put them in scoring position. Here's the blitz. He's hit as he throws, and it's complete to Jawan Jennings. Under a minute to play. Clock is moving. Over the middle. That's complete and hit immediately after the catch is use check. Well, they still have two timeouts with 48 seconds left, so still plenty of time to operate the offense and try to maneuver Robbie Gold into a field goal kick. Garoppolo, another quick one. And that is loose football on the ground. Was it a catch? It's ruled incomplete. I think he took about a step and a half. Okay. Catch. Possession. One step. Half a step. I don't think that's enough, especially in real time. If he just took one more count, I think it'd be really tough to give him that catch and fumble. Gene Steratour with us. What'd you see, Gene? Incomplete pass, in my opinion, guys. They have to go in that sequence. Possession, two feet. Then a football move that did not occur, in my opinion. I felt like we had possession, and at the time, the second foot was just landing. The ball was already coming out, so it does not meet the sequential order necessary to make a catch and fumble. 
All right, Gene, thank you. Cincinnati uses its third and final timeout. Here's another look at it at midfield. And, and really, it, you know, I think, Gene, if we're just talking about half a count more or half a step more, then that's really going to be the difference, right? No question. And as you said, too, in real time, these all look incomplete. But we know when we get into replay and slowing them down, the, that second or split second extends an awful lot longer, and we feel like they're catches. But this is not a catch to me in slow motion, in real time. It just does not meet those three requirements in that specific order. Gene, thank you. San Francisco, two timeouts remaining, 37 seconds on the clock. Garoppolo throwing over the middle of midfield. He's got his man. That catch is made by Brandon Ayuk. And timeout on the field stops the clock at 28 seconds. 17 yards on the play. Well, I tell you what, he had to make some throws, and, and he has made some throws. This, this is a seven stop. It's same coverage, cover two, two safeties deep, but instead of going all the way to the corner, Ayuk is going to stop it and sit it down right on the numbers. There's just a little void right there in between the linebackers, the corner, and the safety, and he gets the protection, he gets the pocket, and he gets the throw downfield to put the 49ers in position. You saw Robbie Gold on the sideline. He has made 21 straight field goals with a chance to tie or take a lead in the second half of a game. That's the longest active streak in the NFL. 49ers have really done a nice job protecting. They're going to have to keep it up here on the next few plays. Garoppolo, incomplete, off the hands of Jennings. It'll be second and ten, and again, more pressure coming from that Bengal defense. Yeah, the pressure just, you know, there's a little bit of room to step up and maybe slide to the left, but Garoppolo certainly felt that pressure coming off of his right side. He couldn't really get his feet set enough to make an accurate throw. Second and ten. They still have one timeout with 24 seconds left, and, you know, really one throw, one intermediate throw puts you in position to be able to kick the field goal, so still in good shape here on second and ten. Garoppolo with time, now throwing over the middle and almost intercepted. Jesse Bates had a shot. Well, they call this one lurk. The safety is going to come down and try to rob any inside route. This safety goes over the top. Everybody else is playing man to man. And Jesse Bates is just reading the eyes of Garoppolo and almost makes the heroic play that Cincinnati needed. That was the perfect call. They had everything that they needed. He just had to finish the play. Third and ten. Garoppolo. Oh, what a catch by Kittle! George Kittle with the catch inside the 30. Oh, this catch. This is, Greg, this is just a glamour shot. Look at this. Elevate oh. fingertips. Oh. 19 yards. Oh, my. I tell you what, we have seen some great football here in the second half. We've seen some tremendous plays, some tremendous throws. Uh, I mean, this December football, fourth quarter, Right now, George Kittle is feeling it, and just what a game. You know, Jesse Bates really had a chance to end that play. You know, that's really that game-closing play that you have to make. And, you know, he probably hasn't had the season he wanted to follow up last year, but that was a golden opportunity. And Garoppolo and Kittle make the Cincinnati defense pay. Everybody's out of timeouts. Garoppolo toward the sideline and complete through the win. Ten seconds remaining in regulation. Robbie Gold's career long is 58 yards. 
Uh, certainly they're they're within his range. You know, number one is no sacks, no negative plays, and the ball has to go. The only way you throw this ball in the field of play if you have a quick one to the outside, but really it comes down to trying to burn some time off the clock. So when you kick it, Cincinnati doesn't have any time left. Garoppolo with time going for the end zone. No, he just threw it away. Right, so they're just running plays right now because they want to burn clock because after this field goal, they don't want to give Cincinnati any time left on the clock. That was the only reason they ran those two plays, and that's why Gar Garoppolo sells that into the first row of the stadium. This will be a 47-yard attempt by Robbie Gold. way pushed it right long enough but he pushed it right we come to the end of regulation <laughs> What a game. It's had everything. I, I, it, it really, it really has had everything you're looking for. And look, what else can you ask for? Garoppolo, they drive the ball down the field. They give Robbie Gold a chance to make the game-winning kick, and it's wide right, and we're going to overtime. Valiant effort by Garoppolo at the end of regulation, but now we go to an extra session. <laughs> well, I tell you what, there is nothing better than watching. The Unless the first team possesses the ball, scores a touchdown, there's a safety, or they keep the ball the entire 10 minute period. Fourth quarter time rules apply. All replays will be from above. And uh, you have two timeouts. San Francisco, it's your call, heads or tails? Called tails. It is heads. Yeah. One of the times you like the ball. Hey. Cincinnati's won the toss, and they will receive on this end. It's time for a break. We'll be back with overtime in just a moment. with Adam Archuleta and A.J. Ross. Greg Gumbel here at Paul Brown Stadium. Welcome back for overtime. Joe Burrow will get his hands on the football first, assuming the Bengals can corral this kickoff. <laughs> no guarantees here today. Stanley Morgan will let this one fall into and through the end zone. For the touchback. Again, Cincinnati with a win here. Climbs up into a first place tie in the AFC North with Baltimore at eight and five. San Francisco looking for a win to solidify its position as the number six seed. I think this game comes down to which offensive line can protect their quarterback the best. Burrow over the middle, wide open. T. Higgins, Higgins to midfield. T. Higgins, five catches on the day for 114 yards, and we have an injured player down for the 49ers. Well, I got to tell you, this throw by Burrow, pressure in his face. He can't step up in the pocket. I believe his arm gets hit right after the throw with no follow through. And he just spots T. Higgins right around that hash mark for a huge first down throw. We'll check on the injured player when we come back. Ambry Thomas, the injured 49er, walking off the field. He's the one who went down low in the attempt of the tackle on T. Higgins. No. That, 
I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, that brings in the other rookie, the fifth round pick, Diamador Lenore. He's going to come in, and, and he's also struggled at times this year. Really gave up a big play last week to DK Metcalf in a two minute drill. From the San Francisco 49, first down. The handoff is to Mixon. And Mixon, pretty much no game. It'll be second and ten. Just a reminder for you, kickoff for the Chicago Bears Green Bay Packers game, 8.22 Eastern time on NBC. So Nick Bosa, he's been rotating all game from left side to right side. This time he's up against Isaiah Prince, the backup right tackle. Burr. That's Uzama. Uzama, 30. Uzama to the 26-yard line. I love this recognition by Burrow. This time, D'Amico Ryans, he's going to run a blitz because they've been sitting back in coverage. And Burrow knows right on the snap exactly where the blitz is coming from. He throws it exactly where the blitz came from. And C.J. Uzama with a terrific catch and run. Mixon. And Mixon. Inside the 25 to about the 22 yard line. Joe Burrow today, 25 of 34 for 348 yards and two touchdowns. And really, after a really tough first half where, you know, he has been getting pressured all game, Nick Bosa has made a living in his backfield. Really didn't have much, couldn't get much production to Jamar Chase or T. Higgins, and then just came alive in the fourth quarter. Had to make some huge throws and just has been at his best when they needed him the most. Mixon again slips inside the 20 to the 19. This has really been two different ball games, first half and second half for the Cincinnati Bengals. No, I think it's, you know, look, you, you've really got to credit. San Francisco's really done a nice job on defense. I think right now, and really what happened is D'Amico Ryan's, his need to protect his corners really has kind of limited what kind of a game he can call. I think they really got away uh, with being able to keep their safeties deep and over the top. But once Cincinnati exploited that, it has really put them in a tough position. Third and three. Burrow pulls it down and is brought down by Nick Boza. You were just talking about how Nick Bosa has been <laughs> flip-flopping back and forth, and he's he's just a pain for quarterbacks. It's just power rush. He's just going to bowl Isaiah Prince back and then beat him to the inside. He's one of the very few defensive ends that can rush from either side, and they've really given free reign to choose. Does he want to line up on the left or the right? Wherever he thinks is the best matchup today, he has chosen very wisely. McPherson from 41 yards out for the lead. Right down the middle. Cincinnati 23-20. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes and NASA's plan to look back in time. Followed by the CBS original movie, A Christmas Proposal, plus NCIS Hawaii tonight on CBS. Plenty of stories out of this game. <laughs> Plenty of stories. And that man is one of them. Certainly, but I think, you know, Nick Bosa, if it's up to him, you know, he's going to have a say in it as well. He, I got to tell you, he has just been pretty dominant and pretty unblockable. And, and he even had a sack taken away because of an illegal hands to the face of penalty. He is just almost single handedly. Beating the Cincinnati Bengals up front. This will not be returned with 6.15 to play in overtime. Cincinnati has its first lead of the day. We go back to where things got started. Look at the tiptoe down the sideline. 
and George Kittle able to do his thing. Car chase at the back of the end zone and then chase down the sideline. Robbie Gold missed the field goal. And here we are in OT with the Bengals leading 23 to 20. Well, Greg, in their last drive, I thought Garoppolo did what he needed to do to put them in a position to win that game. He's going to have to do it again. Garoppolo over the middle finds his man open at the 33-yard line. That's Kittle. Kittle continues to rack up the receptions and the yards. That's 11 catches for 121 and a touchdown today. And really, you know, you look at it, Debo Samuel hasn't had that much of an impact as a wide receiver. He has seven carries for 35 yards. He's only caught one ball. That was a 22-yarder. You know, outside of George Kittle, who has caught those 11 passes, Brandon Ayuk has five of them. But I would love to see Samuel get involved in the offense on this drive. And this is going to go against the 49ers. Ball start. Offense. Number 85. That's a Kittle. Penalty. Second down. Yeah, just a little flinch. And for a boy, a guy that has just had a brilliant game has made some incredible catches and has done everything he can to put the San Francisco 49ers in a position to win. A big mistake and now it's second seven. But again, I would love to see Debo Samuel have a say in this drive. They've got to find a way to get the ball into his hands. Garoppolo throwing sideline. That is caught by Juwan Jennings. Oh man, what? look at that, 6-3, back shoulder, and oh, is that clutch or not? Oh my goodness, Mike Hilton all over him, and Jennings coming into this game, only eight catches. That one was big. 49ers need a field goal to extend the overtime, a touchdown to win the game. Running out of time on the play clock. You've got Blitz coming off the right side. Garoppolo up the middle. He's got his man, and that is Kittle once again. Clock continues to move. 4:35. No blitz. blitz coming here. It's going to be protected, and then Kittle's just going to hook up. Look at the pocket. Everything is picked up, and when you bring a pressure like that, you only have three underneath defenders. You don't have four, so there's extra holes and extra passing lanes. Garoppolo doesn't panic. He sits in the pocket, and of course, you know where he's going to go to. He's going to find number 85. That is his guy. First down. Garoppolo, short one over the middle. That's caught by Jermichael Hasty and hit almost immediately on the play by Von Bell. About Kittle, you mentioned it. 12 catches, 142 yards. Well, that's coming off a nine catch, 181 yard performance last week against Seattle. And it's not just the catches in the yards, but he has made spectacular catches. And once again, his clutch factor when they need a play, he's the boy, man. is he good at making that play? Second and seven. Debo Samuel. Brought down by Cam Sample. Sample, you will recall, came on in relief of Trey Hendrickson, who left the game with a bad back. Under three minutes to play in the OT, third and five. Well, comes down again. I, I started out this overtime period saying I thought the offensive line that could protect their quarterback the best is going to have the best chance to win this game and right now it comes down to can that 49er offensive line give Garoppolo time to deliver the football San Francisco four for 14 on third down today and we get a timeout called by timeout San, Francisco. San Francisco this is their first overtime timeout
So five yards to extend what the Niners would hope to be a game-winning touchdown. Otherwise, a field goal looking for the tie. Yeah, most likely you're looking at something, you know, you're probably going to play some some man-to-man -man defense if you're Lou Anarumo. So here's the question. Is it going to be man-to-man -man and you're going to bring a blitz to try and put a little bit of extra pressure? Or are you going to play man-to-man -man and leave somebody back to try and help somebody? I think, number one, you have got to understand where George Kittle is lined up, and you've got to have an answer for him. Because right now, it doesn't appear as if Cincinnati is able to match up one-on-one -on -one with Kittle. He has won that battle every time, especially when they need him to make a catch. Kittle is 85. Third and five. Garoppolo, quick one over the middle, and that is Kittle. And Kittle to about the 12 for a first down. Oh, boy. And what a throw. Garoppolo throw this ball the only place where he can throw it. Trey Flowers, the corner, is lined up on Kittle. And you've got Von Bell coming from deep to short. And really, if Garoppolo puts that ball in any other spot, Bell is going to light Kittle up. Such a good play on third and five. That connection has been so good. And Kyle Shanahan is loving it. Two minutes to play in OT. We'll be back. That's Zach Taylor. 0 and 23 when his Cincinnati team trailed after three quarters in his career here in Cincinnati. First down. Garoppolo flips it to the near side. And this is Ayuk close to the goal line. He's going to be marked out at the one. What a play call. And uh, he launches. I, I don't know. I can't see from that angle. This one might be able to tell it. Ooh. Oh, boy. I, They're taking a look at it. There. I think he might have. I think there's a chance he might have got it in. The question is, was one of his feet, did it hit out of bounds? I think maybe that right toe. Gene Steratore, we haven't talked to you for a while. What do you see? <laughs> it hasn't. It's been a great game, guys. And you know what? This is an airborne player from my look. Now, he's airborne. No body part lands in the end zone, so all the football has to do is yeah. cross over the pylon or inside for a touchdown. I don't see anything hitting out of bounds before that ball crosses the goal line from the sideline view. And from my other view, I think the football is inside the pylon. I think there's a good chance this is this is looked at and they make this a touchdown. Well, the 49ers are celebrating. Yeah, I, I mean, I would have to say nothing. There was a question whether the, that that toe right there was out of bounds, but it isn't. He's able to keep it in, and I, I'm with Gene. I think I think he's able to get that ball over the plane inside. It can go over the pylon, right, Gene? It doesn't have to go inside, does it? Correct. It can go over or inside. Yes. I, I would say that. I would have to say that 100 percent. I don't see anything that says that that ball does not go over and inside. I'd have to give that a touchdown. And what a play call and effort by Brandon Ayuk, who did. Here we go. After a view, it is a touchdown. The game is over. And the San Francisco 49ers pull it out. The 49ers improved to 7 and 6 on the year. They dropped the Bengals to 7 and 6 on the year. And Kyle Shanahan, one happy head coach. Mm as his Niners with a big step in the right direction. Oh, and how about Jimmy Garoppolo? I just had to have a, he had to answer Burrow throw for throw. And when he had to make it, he made it. And what a play. San Francisco improving, Cincinnati dropping. 
and now in the hunt rather than holding down the seed. Once again in overtime, 26-23, San Francisco over Cincinnati. Let's send you to Jim Nance in Tampa.